Hi everyone, February 22nd, 2019. Wow, well before I begin this video, I'm wanting to hear from all of you. How are you feeling and what is going on where you live? Thank you to those in Nevada, in uh, California, Arizona for emailing me, letting me know what is happening in your neck of the woods. Yes, this rare snow in Arizona. In the worst case of global warming in Arizona we've ever seen. 12 to 24 inches of snow. Oh my goodness. We haven't had this snow in years. I, when I find my snow like this, I think I was a kid. And look at it come down still. I think it's fun. Our roads haven't been plowed. We're stuck up here. We've been stuck up here for a couple days. We haven't been able to leave. So it's like, huh. Don't have much food, but we're okay. We didn't get to any food because everybody else took and stripped all the stores before we could get anything. What? It's okay. Okay, but I will link below to everything. Yes. Uh, well, guess what? New Mexico is getting the snow now, uh, according to what I am seeing on radar and other sites, which I will show you in a moment, but it's on its way to Texas. Snow dumps. Snow dumps. Hmm. There's a reason why I said that, which I'll get to in a second, but record-breaking snow in Arizona. Arizona heading for New Mexico and Texas after dumping nearly three feet of snow Thursday at the Flagstaff Airport during the city's snowiest day on record and more than two feet in Payson icicles hanging from roofs hanging from roofs yeah well um, if you wanna check out what is happening in Payson and uh, Tucson and other areas of Arizona uh, you can click on the links below, but this weather, well, it couldn't be more obvious that this is manufactured by man. Well, it's definitely historic, and they are smashing records with this snowfall. I mean, just look at how deep it's piling up here, and we've still got hours of snow to come. They've already declared a state of emergency here in Flagstaff, as well as to the southwest in Prescott. People across Flagstaff shoveled furiously to try and keep up with the storm, but with the snow falling it up to two inches an hour, that was no easy task. There was so much snow, we saw some people skiing down the middle of the street. But it's not all fun and games. Even with 35 plows and help from the Arizona Department of Transportation, Coconino County had trouble clearing its 750 miles of roadway. Across Arizona, roads and parts of major interstates were forced to shut down. Some drivers got stuck, including Matthew Reynolds. At 100 feet in is when I knew there was problems. Cars lined up. Uh, we were stuck there for four and a half hours. In Payson, the biggest snowstorm in two decades dumped at least 17 inches. That town usually gets just under two feet for the entire winter season. My first. Your first. <laughs> what do you this think This severe. <laughs> this is bad. The storm also hit other areas that aren't so used to snow. This is drone video just outside Las Vegas at Red Rock Canyon. School kids in Pasadena, California, went crazy over the falling snow, as did actor Jerry O'Connell, who couldn't believe it was snowing in Calabasas, just outside Los Angeles. Look, snow, snow, not hail, snow. That is certainly unusual. Uh, back here in Flagstaff, they're making some pretty good progress uh, cleaning up all these streets. Uh, they've been out here all night, and you can see it all piled up here. We expect the snow to stop just a little bit later today, but the storm is not over. It's moving east and bringing up to a foot of snow and a blizzard to Kansas and the Plains. Okay. You guys in Arizona, Nevada, California, collect your snow. And does it look like real snow? Or does it look like artificial snow? Are you getting pellets? Are you getting snow that's not melting? 
please collect it, inform us, leave comments below, um, let us know how you guys are doing and what you are thinking. Um, I will link below to one Pacific Redwood and I recommend that you book, uh, that you subscribe to one Pacific Redwood because he posts the videos and he shows you the weather modification, the signatures that you can see on these sites. Uh, he goes to the water vapor loop and this is what he tells you. As this uh, moisture shield right here, a dive down, we can see that it's now moving out to the uh, northeast. So tomorrow rain is scheduled. Actually, uh, as I say, it's, it's raining now. We just were looking at that Doppler map. Uh, thunderstorms are uh, forecast for tomorrow. Let's look at the uh, bigger map here. This is the Northeast Pacific Water Vapor Loop. And we can see that gale force weather system here just north of the uh, Hawaiian Islands. This is being forced north. It can't move uh, in a uh, easterly pattern because of this blockade of high pressure. So once again, we uh, have great evidence of a man-made uh, weather manipulation, which has nothing to do with smokestack emissions or tailpipe emissions or carbon dioxide. All this uh, water vapor here is being forced around this stationary high-pressure blockade. That's not CO2 causing that. No, it is not CO2 causing that. And at the end of this video, I'm going to be reading an article that was just recently posted. Another United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change whistleblower. But, yeah, uh, even SoCal, Southern California, beaches got snow. The beaches got snow? You're kidding. Hey, Jonathan Novak here. You're watching Eyewitness This. Here are some stories to start your day. Of course, the snow, big story here. The last couple of days, we've seen snow fall and accumulate, actually, in places that never see snow, places like Hemet, Rancho Cucamonga. We even saw snow fall in Yorba Linda below 1,000 feet. And that's just one of the many storms we've seen this season, which actually now, experts saying, have put a big dent in the drought, the worst of the drought conditions now in California, up in the northern part of the state. But of course, you know, we might always get back into a drought, so conservation, always key. And we might always just get back into a drought. Ah, oh, well, man is controlling the weather. Look at this. Oh man, look at this. From a beautiful winter vacation to a travel nightmare. That's what happened to drivers right on State Route 38 earlier this morning. After heavy snow trapped nearly 600 vehicles there for hours. The CHP working for hours as well to clear those stranded motorists on the route between Angeles Oaks and Big Bear. State Route 38 was finally reopened in both directions around 3 a.m. Chains, of course, are being required for all non-four-wheel drive vehicles. Guess where that was? California. Um, in case you missed it, colossal winter storm turns Well, David late. and Louise Oops. Turpin sat in a courtroom oh, where... Sorry. Um, turns deadly. Yes, a lot of car crashes. People are dying. But look at this. Snow fell in quick bursts at times. In quick bursts making for dangerous road conditions, especially for unsuspecting drivers. So you're driving along and all of a sudden you get a snowburst. All right. Oh. This is New Mexico. Arizona, it looks like you're, well, what? Doesn't seem like much snow, but rain. Look at the extremely low frequency cutout of this precipitation in New Mexico. And all day long, 
California, you've been crossing your extremely low frequencies and you've been sending them, oh, just one shot into Arizona. You had more shots into Arizona earlier today. Is it is it snowing in Arizona anywhere now? This is an interesting little, um, well, what do we call these things? Anomalies? This seems to be a steady... I don't, a steady shot of frequencies, of extremely low frequencies, right here, northern Utah, kind of like this steady, extremely low frequency, coming from the uh, extremely low frequency transmitter site. Why do I want to say clam bake? Uh, Michigan. I don't know, but it's there is a extremely low frequency transmitter site right here, and there is always one taking place. Um, and this one seems to be quite active. As you can see, it is looks like it's turning into like a razor's edge. I want to check out Washington. Why? Because I'm going to show you what I caught earlier today, but you can see the extremely low frequencies uh, emitted from uh, close to Spokane. And isn't it interesting how defined this precipitation becomes? Wow! Seems like there's a, a wall right there that won't let the precipitation to pass. All right, this is what I caught earlier. Wow, do you see this burst of precipitation? Right here, and the extremely low frequencies. It'll come again, boom, okay. And here are the extremely low frequencies that were going off earlier. And here is what? A burst, another burst of precipitation with extremely low frequencies. Rat smack in southeast Arizona where you were getting snow. Is that right? And this tail, which has been pretty much, uh, I don't know, I'm going to say the last two days, a steady tail of precipitation uh, going right through Texas. And this has been pretty steady for, well, how do you like all of the rain, guys? How do you like all of the rain? Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, on up to the uh, Northeast. But I also want to show you this. This was yesterday. Look at, look at what is feeding this storm. Look at all of the microwaves and look at all of the aerosols laid laid into this storm all of the ripples that you see are microwaves and I mean the ripples right here and what looks like a grid pattern that develops right in this section. It's obvious the whole thing was manufactured. Look at what's going on. Arizona. On up. And this was very interesting. Okay. Here is a grid pattern 
a grid pattern of frequencies, a grid pattern of frequencies down here, the microwaves rippling through, and the microwaves down here. This is Arizona. This is your sun, guys. And this is New Mexico. Um, it's so obvious. All of the frequencies in use, uh, the microwaves are so visible all over the place, making it very obvious that this is man-made. It is not a natural occurrence, and it's not climate change, and it's not global warming. Um, well, here I said, wow. Huh? Um, we got rain last night, or early this morning, that was so intense. But look at, look at, I don't even know. I want to go back a little bit. Um, look at this. You know, it's, it's being pushed west. This is going up, you know, northeast, but this is pushing west. When you see, you know, these um, lines of precipitation that develop due to the microwaves, but it's going in, an, in a direction that it should not be going. It should be going similar to what we are seeing right here. But you see this drifting. Only man can do that. This is not natural at all. And up, uh, uh, I mean, my God, the microwaves. Look at this. That's why I asked earlier in the video, how are you guys feeling? Because the microwaves all over the country have really been in use, intense, powerful, undeniable, all of the microwaves are just evaporating, as you can see, right before your very eyes. It's uh, getting colder. And you can see all the microwaves on the periphery of this uh, continuous rain that we are getting here. Yeah, it's, it's obvious. Obvious, obvious, obvious. So, this is current. This is uh, satellite, current satellite. Look at the high frequency heating of this storm that now is on its way to Kansas. You're going to be getting a, a whole lot of weather. But look at the frequencies down here at the tail end. But look at all of the aerosols being that they are. This whole thing has been fed for days on end with the aerosols, the uh, heavy uh, metals, the chemicals, the nanoparticulates that they can hit with frequencies, and voila, you got pre precipitation. That's what you are seeing right here take place. You see, they, they're laying the aerosols, and, and now I just got a really high-pitched tone in my right ear. This is wild. Um, look at all of the frequencies right down here. And you get bursts of precipitation. You can even see the extremely low frequencies develop Corpus Christi area or is it Brownsville? Not sure of right here. Oh boy. None of this is natural. None of it is natural. So, here we go again. 
Um, and let's just go to uh, here. We'll go to this region. Looked at all of the microwaves. Now, I, my hunch, when I see the microwaves in use like this, all of these ripples, um, I can imagine that an awful lot of you are not feeling very well. So New Mexico, you guys are getting blasted with a lot of snow. This is apparently going to be moving into Texas, but it, this thing is so, it's been kind of like pretty much the same for days. They're feeding it from the Pacific, laying all of the aerosols, and they just keep it going. Let's see down here, because, whoops. Well, everywhere, everywhere you go, you can see the microwaves being used and the laying of the aerosols. But, will I capture it there? Yeah. High frequency heating right down here at the tail end, which is the red developing. Um, but it's obvious. You can <laughs> look at all of these, call it what you you don't want to, the the, uh, the geoengineering, the chemtrails, right here, all of these lines, the white lines, and then they can heat them up with microwaves. They're just feeding this storm, and we're supposed to get rain again tomorrow, and rain Sunday, and then I think we have a break for a couple of days, and they're calling for more rain next weekend. This whole winter has been very, very unusual. Now, I want you to take a look. The periphery of this uh, weather front that's moving through, you see all of what looks like um, very defined lines jutting out all over. That's our Doppler radar system, and it's going through the entire thing. Look closely, you can see. Doppler radar, high frequency heating of the ionos ionosphere, bounces back, extremely low frequencies, the extremely low frequencies from Gwen Towers, from transmitter sites, voila, you've got weather and the frequencies can hold in place and it looks I you know for anyone who has been following this for years and I should ask Mike Morales are you seeing these you know thousands of miles of storm but is this not a little bit different than what we have normally seen that they are feeding and maintaining these weather fronts dropping rain or snow up north um, causing an awful lot of flooding but this is this is definitely new for me to see this the literal feeding of these storms that they just go on and on and on. Look at, you can see all of the microwaves right down here. Well, look, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> really? Is that Mother Nature? I don't think so. New Mexico. 
All right. What is this Weather Modification Incorporated, a commercial company that provides weather modification services where clients and projects, worldwide success, all of these countries it has provided services. They've not updated this. They just keep it on their site. But look at this. Canada, India, Indonesia, Jordan, Mexico, Mali, Morocco, Saudi Arabia, Australia, Argentina, Antigua. Wow. United Arab Emirates, Thailand, Spain, Senegal, Turkey, United States. And we are the country that has, wow, we've got a lot of services provided by Weather Modification, Inc. Now, who are some of those states? Texas, of course. Uh, you got Texas, you've got uh, Utah, you've got West Central Texas, you've got Western Dakota, you've got Wyoming, you've got Sonoma, Santa Barbara uh, counties in California, South Dakota, Panhandle, um, Texas, Oklahoma, Northeast Sampling, which is for the Northeast, um, but, oh yes, New Mexico Blast, New Mexico, and we have North American Weather Consultants, another commercial company providing weather modification, North American Weather Consultants, a lot of California counties use North American Weather Consultants, utility companies use North American Weather Consultants, and you can check out the services that and an awful lot of information on their site, um, and how they were able to increase snowfall, increase precipitation. They provide snowfall and rainfall augmentation and other services, but what I am showing you is that if we have weather modification commercial companies that provide services to states, to countries, and they increase snowfall and rainfall, how could anybody deny that weather modification uh, just doesn't exist? And when you have companies that can increase snowfall and rainfall, then, well, don't we have to question our weather. Of course we do. Of course we do. What is this? Oh my God, this guy is standing in a lot of snow. What is this? This is the history of cloud sitting in Arizona to bring about snow, to bring about rain. And you can check this out. I mean, the, the modification of super cooled clouds. Huh. Looks interesting, doesn't it? looks like the clouds that we see a lot. Now these, um, you've got this blanket of cloud and it can have that ripple effect. Oh, and little, little holes created by the perfect, created by frequencies. But haven't you seen clouds like this where you've got cloud, but then you have this feathering effect that takes place. Well, I have. Uh, modification of super cold clouds. You can read this and learn about weather modification, but Arizona weather modification projects, you're kidding me. Arizona has weather modification projects going on? Yes. Uh, Republic Plain starts rain over Roosevelt watershed. General Electric scientists predicted. They predicted success and they got it. 1947 Arizona weather modification projects. Clouds are forced to give up water. Dry ice pellet experiment used to start deluge. Dry ice rainmakers catch states fancy. This is back in the 40s. Arizona weather modification projects. Yep. Salt River Project, 1949, Arizona Weather Modification Projects, Moore, 1950, in the 1950s. All right. Should I leave this for the next?
video? I will. I will link below. UN IPCC scientist blows whistle on lies about climate and sea level. This is Dr. Uh, Niles XL Mourner, the retired head of the Paleogeophysics and Geodynamics at Stockholm University. Yes, the IPCC, United Nations Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change, has been misleading humanity about climate change and sea levels. And Mourner tried to warn the UN IPCC that it was publishing false information that would inevitably be discredited. They simply ignored him, and so dismayed, he resigned in disgust and decided to blow the whistle. How can we get through to people? All links are below.